Hello and welcome. My name is Pastor Andrew, and uh, I am here with my Studio Live 24R from Personas. And this is a rack mount mixer. Uh, and so you can see the device here at the bottom. This is just an image on my computer. Uh, and we've got inputs and we've got outputs. And then we've got here the UC Surface control software that you can download from the Personas website uh, to control this device. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to set up a channel from scratch on this device. So I'm going to scroll over here to channel 20 because this is where I have just plugged in uh, a microphone that is sitting on my desk and I'm going to show you how to set this up from scratch. So the first thing that we want to do is select the channel because then all of my input settings are going to be appropriate uh, for that channel and when I make changes it is going to make changes to the channel that I've selected. Now the mic that I've plugged in is an AKG Perception 220. This is a phantom powered mic uh, and so that means it's a condenser mic and so I need to turn on 48 volt power so that the capsule uh, can be activated and now once I've hit that button you can see a little bit of a green light coming up here but it's a very weak green light, it's not coming very far up the channel strip. And so what we want to do uh, is increase our preamp. And now you see that as I'm talking into this mic and I'm just picking up the mic and bringing it right close to my face, and you can see we've got plenty of channel, uh, plenty of uh, uh, gain on the channel there. So the first thing uh, that we've done is increase the preamp. And you can either uh, use your mouse to increase the volume this way, or you can select and override with your keyboard to get the exact uh, uh, setting that you want. So this is a, a little bit away from me sitting on my desk, and so I'm going to crank it up uh, to probably 45. And now, uh, I'm, that's probably good. Uh, so if I go to 50, uh, that let's crank this up a little bit. And so now you can see that it's starting to clip, uh, and that red light is coming out when I've got the preamp all the way up to 60. That is too high. We don't want it that high. We want to bring it back down. Uh, so probably 40 is sufficient for this particular mic in this particular setting. And so now you can see that red light goes away and the green line is coming up. Uh, perhaps 50 would be about the right setting for this. One, two, three, four. Check. Check. Yeah. So at 50, if I really yell into it, uh, I can clip it. Uh, but it's it's okay. So 45, 50, somewhere in there uh, is sufficient. I don't want the polarity set on, and I don't want this linked with the channel beside it. Um, polarity is there uh, <clears throat> to switch the uh, uh, the way in which this, the, the, the signal passes to the channel to be the exact opposite of what is already there. And the reasons why you would use polarity switch uh, would be if you were having uh, phase issues. You could find out whether you had a problem by switching the polarity and having that uh, uh, give you an indication as to whether or not there's a phase issue. So this is uh, here not because it's a setting that you would normally use in a live situation. Uh, it's there because it's a diagnostic tool that can reveal problems in terms of balanced versus unbalanced signals. Now, because this is a vocal mic, I want to turn. I might want to turn on my high pass filter, uh, which would uh, over here in the EQ uh, cause some of the low end of the EQ to be cut out. And you can see as I move that up and down, uh, this curve moving up or down the spectrum. Then the other thing I might want to do is put on a delay, uh, but just on the main channel, it's uh, odd that you would have a delay be something that you want. And then I'm going to send it to the main bus and to bus A and B. Uh, and so what we want to do is then come into our gear icon here on channel 20. And I've got all of my vocal microphones yellow uh, to help them easily be identified. And I've got three different colors of yellow that I use. Uh, as to whether or not that is a microphone that is uh, intended for speech or for vocals. And so whether somebody's singing into it or just talking into it, uh, I've got slightly different yellow colors, but all of them are yellow. And then I've got green and blue uh, for the various instruments. 
Uh, and so this <clears throat> is just a test mic, so I'm going to rename it test mic. And now down here you see on the, the channel strip, uh, it is now called test mic, and the color is changed to yellow. And I can select whether the input uh, is coming from the analog input, from a network input, which would be uh, if I had a stage box, and I connected that uh, via the network audio jack, then I want, would want that to be coming over the network, <clears throat> and then I would use my digital patching to find the appropriate uh, input source uh, here. Uh, so if 20 was uh, actually coming in over uh, network, uh, that, that would be uh, how I would do that, or I can bring it in from the computer over USB, uh, or I can uh, do that with uh, the uh, SD card, uh, but that's not something I want to do. And then I can control, uh, if I'm stereo linking it, what settings are common to both channels or which I can control individually. So if I wanted my compressor and limiter to have different settings for the left channel and the right channel, I would deselect that. Uh, but if I want the name and, excuse me, all of the rest of these things to be the same for both the left and the right of the channel, uh, then I would select those to make sure that they were the same. Finally, uh, the digital send options, uh, what goes to the computer can be either pre or post, which means that if I draw the fader up and down, uh, it, it either does or does not uh, affect what's being sent to the computer. So if I set it to pre, then whatever I do with the fader uh, has no effect as to what goes to the computer. If I do it as post, then if I draw the fader down, what's being sent to the computer is also going to be lower in volume. So I'm going to again select the gear icon to come back out of that. Now I could come in and individually set my gate compressor equalizer and limiter. Uh, <clears throat> actually, gate and limiter uh, probably won't change with what I'm about to do. But here I'm going to come into my presets menu, which brings up a context-sensitive set uh, of uh, options. And so if I decide that this is actually going to be a drum, I can change the uh, available presets to be drums, but I actually do want this to be vocals. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a bit of a frog in my throat here. So I want this to be vocals and I want it to be uh, speech. So I'm going to select the, uh, uh, the speech one uh, preset contained in the mixer, put there by the Personas engineers, and you can see uh, what filters uh, are going to be uh, uh, recalled. And so I can say the names, the mutes, the assigns, the polarity, the preamp, uh, whether or not it's 48 volt. All of these features can be stored in the preset, uh, but currently in the preset, uh, those th these are the things that are uh, so it's channel type color pan uh, and these filters that are part of the fat channel and so when I hit recall those are the things that are going to be affected and so now I hit recall and you can see that my compressor and my equalizer changed significantly from what they were uh, just being flat a moment ago now let's say that I would like to adjust my compressor and bring the threshold down a bit and uh, make the uh, uh, the ratio a little bit uh, more gentle or a little bit uh, more severe. Uh, turn on uh, this EQ and uh, give myself a boost or a cut over here. I can then come down here to an empty location uh, and I can uh, choose uh, all of the uh, attributes of uh, the, the, the fat channel and the input stuff and then I can hit store and that is going to on my other monitor bring up uh, this dialog box uh, that says test mic and it says store preset in the vocal category and so if I hit OK then one of those empty locations is going to be test mic which is the speech preset with the uh, various uh, uh, adjustments that I've made to compressor, equalizer, limiter, uh, and the input stuff. So whether it's 48 volts or not is going to now be uh, stored in that preset. And if I 
recall this preset on a different channel, all of those settings are going to come back up. So uh, if uh, phantom power isn't something that you want to recall with the preset, then you simply deselect it. Uh, because phantom power applied to the wrong microphone can have negative effect. So that's something you might want to be careful for, careful with. Or maybe you don't want the color to be something or the polarity uh, that that is something that is automatically recalled uh, if I hit the recall button. And so <clears throat> once I'm done, I'm going to delete uh, my test mic preset and that now goes back to an empty location. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could take my Andrews default uh, settings and store that to my local computer. So this is everything that's on the mixer. This is everything that's on the local computer. And I can transfer all of my presets over to the local computer so that those are backed up. And if anything happens to my mixer and I lose all of the information that I have stored in my mixer, well, then I've got it on my local computer and I can just load it back into the mixer and suddenly it's available again as a preset. Now, let's say that I've done all this and then I decide, well, you know, uh, I, I really want to go back to how things uh, were when the, the channel was first set up. All I do is I hit reset and it asks me if I want to reset the channel uh, and it will allow me to very quickly and easily wipe out all of those settings and I can set it up again uh, or I can uh, uh, do something different. Now over here you see A and B and if I am on B, uh, if I'm on A and I move to B, uh, you can have two different uh, uh, setups for each individual channel and move between the two of them. So if I change my EQ setting here and go back to A, you notice that that, one's back, that went back to where it was before, and now it's on B. So in B, let's say I want speech 2 <clears throat> to be my setup. Uh, so now on A, I've got speech 1, and on B, I've got speech 2, which essentially turns the equalizer off, but still has the compressor settings. And then I turn the EQ on, and I make a few adjustments, uh, and that's how I want for my B channel to be. And so if you've got two people using uh, the microphone, well, then you can have the setup for one available and then quickly switch over to the other one for the other person who's going to use that microphone if their voice happens to be very different. Or if that person is moving from using the mic uh, uh, for spoken voice into singing, you can have a spoken voice uh, set up and then make uh, male one, for example, uh, the B setup. And now you've got a very different EQ pattern uh, and compressor and all the rest of it. And uh, so you can switch between spoken and singing quickly and easily. Over here we've got our copy and paste. And so let's say that uh, I wanted all the same settings that I've got on uh, channel 20 on channel 21. I would simply hit copy, move over to channel 21 and hit paste. And then everything that I've set up on channel 20 is also available on channel 21. But I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to reset the channel. And everything goes back to flat. And that is how one quickly and easily sets up a channel. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you have a great day.